Hello everyone, welcome back to a new uh, video for reading comprehension. Uh, this time the reading comprehension question is focusing on the details and the indirect message uh, that a reader can get out of those details. Um, let's start reading the most recent iteration of the immersive theater experience, Sleep No More, which premiered in New York City in 2011 transforms its performance space, a five-story warehouse, into a 1930s-era hotel. Audience members who wander through the labyrinthine uh, venue at their own pace and follow the actors as they play out spontaneous, interweaving narrative loops, confront the impossibility of experiencing uh, the production in its entirety. The play's refusal of narrative coherence thus hinges on the sense of spatial fragmentation that the venue's immense and intricate layout generates. After reading the passage, I know that some of us may find this passage difficult due to the new vocabulary in the passage. So we are trying to deal with the passage as if we are in the exam. We don't have um, a dictionary to find out about the new words or the meanings, but we're uh, getting the general meaning and we'll try to answer the question based on our understanding. The most recent iteration of the immersive theater experience Sleep No More, which premiered in New York City in 2011, transforms its performance space, a five-story warehouse, into a 1930s-era hotel. Okay, so we have a theater experience, and we have the title of this experience, or this show, theater show, Sleep No More. How do we know? It's capitalized and italicized. It was premiered in New York City. Premiered comes from the word premiere, so it's like the first time. Uh, in 2011, when you have a show in a city, is it in the whole city or is it in a specific place in the city? Exactly, it's in the specific place in the city. So what about this specific place? It's a five-story warehouse. Five-story means five-floor building. So the word story means floor, and it's the um, the American spelling for the word story, S-T-O-R-E-Y. The, the theater itself is uh, weird, is unusual, because it's uh, a building consisting of five, uh, five floors. Okay, and the producers of the uh, show changed this five-story building into a 1930s hotel. So what about the audience? The audience who wander through um, this building at their own pace. So audience wander. Wander means go around. At their own pace. At their own speed. Okay, and follow the actors. Who follow the actors? The audience. As they play, who play? The actors, simultaneous. Interweaving narrative loops. Confront, that's a verb. Confront means to face. Okay, who's doing this uh, action of confront? Exactly, it's the audience members. Because when we start the sentence, audience members, okay, that w which is the subject, we did not put a verb for the subject. So um, this part starting from the comma uh, before who until the comma after the word loops, this is what we call interrupter. It's additional information to add to the meaning, but does not affect the structure of the sentence, which is mainly about the subject and the verb. So what about the audience members? They confront they face the impossibility of experiencing the production in its entirety. So it's, in, uh, it's impossible for them to watch the whole show in its entirety means uh, the word entirety reminds you of the word entire. So um, um, they cannot see the show as a whole. Why? 
because they have to move around the five uh, floor building. They have different paces or different speeds, so they cannot see the whole thing altogether. The play's refusal of narrative coherence thus hinges on the sense of spatial fragmentation that the venue's immense and intricate layout generates. Okay, I would like you to look at the word fragmentation. We took something in the grammar which is called fragment. Okay, when it's not a sentence, when it's not a complete sentence, so it's a fragment. The word fragment means something broken, something not related together, not complete. Okay, so fragmentation, uh, um, it's the spatial fragmentation. Spatial comes from the word space. Um, the space is not complete. It's divided into five floors. So is this usual? Is this uh, uh, something that we are all familiar with? No, it's not. And this is exactly what the passage is giving you a message about, that the setting of the performance itself is not usual, is not something that we are all familiar with, is not something that even audience can watch the whole show through. So what is the question asking you about? What does uh, the text most strongly uh, suggest about uh, Sleep No More's use of its performance space? Okay. When you see the word suggest, it means that is something which is not stated frankly, which is not said directly in the passage. But from the passage, we came to know that the space, the performance space is a five floor building. People go around the building and uh, they have different speeds and they cannot watch the whole show altogether because of this moving around. Okay. So let's take each choice and think of um, the possibility of taking this choice. The, cho uh, the choice of New York City venue likely enabled the play's creators to experiment with the use of theatrical space in a way that venues from earlier productions could not. Okay, we ask it a question when we were reading the passage. When we have a show in New York City, is it in the whole city? No, it's not in the whole city. So the performance space, is it New York City? No, it's not the New York City. Actually, it's the five floor building. Okay, this is number one. Number two, does the text talk about any earlier productions? No, it's the only thing that refers to the word early is the transformation of the building into a 1930s hotel, which is not at all mentioning anything about other productions. So mostly A will be excluded. B, audience members likely find the experience of the play disappointing because they generally cannot make their way through the entire venue. Okay. Let's talk about the audience. Did we have anything about their attitude, their reactions, their feelings? No, we don't. This is number one. Number two, um, the audience couldn't make their way through the entire venue? No, that's totally the opposite of what was mentioned in the passage because it says in line three, uh, at their own pace, so they can use their own speed to go move around uh, this five-floor building. C. The production's dependence on a particular performance environment would likely make it difficult to reproduce exactly in a different theatrical space. Okay, uh, so is this a choice that we can take? Why? Okay. Um, particular performance environment. What is this particular performance environment? It's the five floor space or building that they use as the theater for themselves. Make it difficult to reproduce exactly in a different theatrical space. So 
is this easy or accessible to uh, have this show on a different uh, theater? No. Why? Because the the show itself depends on this uh, weird or unusual environment. Okay. So this is um, um, a choice that we can mostly take. To make sure, we'll just read D. Audience members who navigate the space according to a recommended itinerary will likely have a better uh, grasp of the play's narrative than audience members who depart from the itinerary. Okay, first of all, the word itinerary means like schedule. Did we have anything mentioned about itinerary, about something suggested to the audience, about a system that audience should follow in order to understand um, the whole show? No, we don't have this. Exactly. So we excluded A, we excluded B, and we excluded D. And the most imp uh, uh, proper answer here would be C. Always remember that your questions are most welcome on English for Fun English Skills at gmail.com. You will get answer, explanation, and an example to support the answer. Thank you and see you.